So in this part of the review, what I want to talk about is serial dilutions and how we're going to put everything that I've talked about up to, the, to this point into practice. So first thing we have to do is establish the question that we're asking in the spectrophotometry lab. What we have is we have a protein sample. that particular protein sample has an unknown concentration. So we have a protein sample with an unknown concentration. Concentration, whenever you're given concentration, it is typically given to you in milligrams per milliliter. It can be micrograms per microliter or uh, grams per liter, but in this particular exercise, we specifically focused on milligrams per milliliter. So we want to get some concentration for this protein sample in the units milligrams per milliliter. So what can we do with this particular protein sample? Okay, so we've got it in the test tube, and what you did was you added biuret to it. So currently, right now, just like what I drew in the previous lecture, this test tube has three things in it. It's got biuret, it's got water, and it's got protein. Again, remember, they're not separated like this in the solution. They're actually all mixed together. I simply divided it so you could see. These are the three components in here. Okay. So you've got some concentration of milligrams per milliliter. That is, milligrams of protein per milliliter of this solution as a whole. But we don't know what it is yet. So, what can we do with this particular test tube right now? We can put it into the spectrophotometer. Okay, so let's put it into the spec. So we put it into the spectrophotometer. But the spec can only give us two readings out. It can give us absorbance, and it can give us percent transmittance. Now, neither of these two values are in milligrams per milliliter, and that's a problem. Because no matter what we get out for these two values, it's not going to tell us the concentration of this unknown sample. So we're going to have to devise a way to correlate this to either absorbance or percent transmittance. So we need to correlate concentration to one of these two values. And we're going to choose absorbance for this exercise. So what we want to be able to do is we want to get to the point where we can say if we have a certain absorbance, it tells us that we have a certain concentration. So again, the overall goal, we want to know what the concentration is of this unknown sample. Now, one of the things we do know is what kind of protein this is. So that's beneficial to us. Okay? So this, is, this protein is egg albumin. And what that means we can do is we can make a solution of this egg albumin protein. Okay, So an egg albumin protein solution. And if we make it, then we know what concentration it is. And we can use that concentration to eventually help us figure out the unknown concentration. So what we did was we made what's known as a standard solution. So this is called a standard, protein standard solution. Okay. And by making it, we can decide what the concentration is of that standard solution. And the starting concentration of that standard solution was 10 milligrams per milliliter. Okay, so again, here's my protein standard. And in it, I've got protein and I've got water. Okay. And let's say that we're going to start with a total of, um, in your first test tube, you technically start with 1 milliliter. So one milliliter. Okay. And if it's 10 milligrams per milliliter, then what that tells you is 
in this one milliliter of solution, you should have 10 milligrams of protein. So what can we do with this at this point in time? Well, there's several things that we can actually do with this. First and foremost, I could put this test tube into the spectrophotometer and get an absorbance reading for it, which I would then be able to say, if I have 10 milligrams per milliliter for my protein solution, it will have this absorbance. And I could compare that to the absorbance that I got from my unknown in an attempt to determine the concentration. The problem with it right now is I only have one value, which means if my unknown sample's concentration is greater than 10 milligrams per milliliter or less than 10 milligrams per milliliter, I'm not going to know the exact amount. All I could say is because the absorbance is higher or lower than the absorbance for my standard, it's either higher than 10 milligrams respectively per milliliter or lower than 10 milligrams per milliliter. So what I need is I need more values. I don't just want 10 milligrams per milliliter. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's known as a standard dilution, or I'm sorry, a serial dilution of our standard solution. Okay, so we're going to do a serial dilution. Okay, so thinking about that word, serial dilution means, serial means repeated, And to dilute something means to make less concentrated. So I'm going to see the concentration of my solution decrease as I do these dilutions. Okay, so this initial solution in my first tube, tube one, came from some beaker that contained my standard solution. And remember, my standard solution is 10 milligrams per milliliter, which means for every one milliliter of solution I have, I have 10 milligrams of protein, just like what I saw here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and what you did, is in your second tube, so tube two, you had something to start off with in that tube you had one milliliter of water. Okay. This is water. Does water contain protein? Unless it's specialized water, the answer is no. So how many milligrams of protein are in this one mil of water? Zero, right? So there are zero milligrams of protein in my one mil of water. From my standard solution, I'm going to pull and add one milliliter. So I'm adding one milliliter of my protein standard. How many milligrams of protein are in that one milliliter? Well, if we come back over here, it's 10 milligrams for every one milliliter. So if I'm adding a milliliter of solution, it means I'm adding 10 milligrams of protein. So I now am going to have here one milliliter solution that has 10 milligrams of protein in it, okay, in this layer here. But remember, these aren't just going to sit in separate layers. They're going to mix, giving me a total volume for the solution of two milliliters. So I now have a mixture. Okay, of two milliliters of solution. How many milligrams of protein total right now are in this two milliliters? Well, let's total out the protein that I started with in each of my individuals. I started with 10 milligrams and zero milligrams. 10 plus zero gives me 10 milligrams. To get concentration, though, I'm going to need to divide that number by the total volume. Okay, so to divide my two amounts of milligrams added together by the volume. And this is going to be the total volume. So one milliliter plus one milliliter. 
Okay, so it's going to be 10 milligrams over 1 milliliter plus 1 milliliter, which gives me 10 milligrams per 2 milliliters. Okay, and I can simplify that because 2 is even and 10 is even. Both are divisible by 2. So if I divide this by 2 and 2, okay, it's going to give me, or if I just divide 10 by 2, it's going to give me 5 milligrams per milliliter. Okay. So my new concentration after doing this dilution is 5 milligrams per milliliter. So the concentration of this tube is 5 milligrams per milliliter. Your first tube had a concentration of 10 milligrams. Per milliliter. Okay. All right, so tube two has a concentration of five milligrams per milliliter. All right, and now what I'm going to do is this first test tube technically has one mil of solution in it. Okay, so I'll change the level here just so that it all looks uniform and nice. Okay, because we've already been through all the math for that. Okay. So it's got one mil, and it's got a concentration of 10 milligrams per milliliter. Okay, the second solution, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to pull out a milliliter of that solution, and I'm going to add it to another test tube. This test tube starts with one mil of water in it. How many milligrams of protein are in water? Well, again, zero milligrams. Okay. And I'm taking one mil from this solution, and I'm adding it to this solution. So first off, how many milligrams of protein are in that one mil? if the concentration of this solution is 5 milligrams per milliliter. Just like what we saw with this one, where if we pulled 1 mil out, it was going to be 10 milligrams, we'll see the same thing here. So I'm adding 5 milligrams of protein to this solution. So I've removed a milliliter from here, which now gives me 1 mil of solution total in here. I've removed the mill and I'm now adding it to this one. So that one mill of solution is going to have how many milligrams of protein in it? Well, it's going to be five milligrams of protein. And that's going to give me a new volume in here of two milliliters total. And again, if we use the same mathematics I showed you before to calculate the new concentration, what we're going to do is we're going to take our starting concentration of protein, our starting amount of protein, add it to the other starting amount of protein in the opposite solution. So 5 milligrams from this solution, 0 milligrams from this solution, because they're mixing together now, so we're getting totals. And we're going to divide that by the total volume, so 1 milliliter plus 1 milliliter. That's going to give us 5 milligrams per 2 milliliters. And if we divide 5 by 2, it's going to give us 2.5 milligrams per milliliter. OK. So this new solution now has 2.5 milligrams per milliliter. I think what you see happening now is as we dilute each time, the new solution that we make now has a concentration that is half of the previous solution. 5 is half of 10, 2.5 is half of 5, and if we were to continuously do this as you did in the lab, then what we should get for the next two values are 1.25 milligrams per milliliter, and then also 0 0.625 milligrams per milliliter. Okay, so you do 
this particular dilution another two times. And at the end of it all, you've got five test tubes, one through five, with concentrations of 10 milligrams per milliliter, 5 milligrams per milliliter, 2.5 milligrams per milliliter, 1.25 milligrams per milliliter, and 0 0.625 milligrams per milliliter. Now the big question, why? Right? Why did we even bother doing this? Let's take it back, and then I'll show you how we're going to use all of this information. Remember that what we want to do is figure out the concentration for this unknown. All we can do with the unknown is put it into the spectrophotometer and get some absorbance and some transmittance. But now what we have is we have five samples that have known concentrations and we can put those five samples into the spectrophotometer. And as we place those samples into the spectrophotometer, we're going to get absorbances for each of those samples. Okay? So in the next review, I'm going to show you how we can take these concentrations and the absorbances that we get for each of these tubes and use them to help us figure out the concentration for the unknown sample. So we'll be using the standard curve in the next lecture.